Hello, this is uh, Dave, and welcome uh, to Equity Story. I'm with uh, the amazing uh, Wolfie, and uh, this is just a general share advice and not a personal advice. What's that badge, Wolf? Can you see it? Poland, is it? Yes, the Polish emblem, the eagle, the white eagle. Oh. Uh, it's my little memento. I had to bring something back, Polish. There you go, a little polo uh, shirt. Really? I, I'm, why the white eagle? Why, why did they choose the white eagle? I don't is, know. It's a good is, question. I don't know. There must be some sort of historical thing. But the white, white eagle has been around since the medieval time, since the first. Because white is a color of surrender, isn't it? And, <laughs> and, 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 it, well. and, it, and eagles fly away from... So is it just like, oh, there's a battle. Do you just fly away and surrender? No, no, no. We never okay. fly away. We always stand our ground and fight. <laughs> I know. I, I saw a map of English Poland. that sell us out. I, I saw a, a map of Poland over, uh, I think it was 800 years. I've never seen a country change its borders like Poland. Unbelievable. Thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, I like the emblem. It's nice, the white eagle. And I, and I will say the Polish fighters in the Second World War were fantastic. Exactly. So, we never sh you know, shirk the issue. We always go for it. Yeah, no. Tough, tough people, the Poles. Um, not very good at charting, though. Oh, um, uh, uh, we're very good now. Thank you very much. In fact, probably better than the teachers. All right, well, hang on, Wolf. Before we start, yes. so mm -hmm. I know you love your US politics. Yes. Oh, I... And, and uh, you've been looking <sighs> at your... Friend... Um, so tell me, the US elections, yes. uh, the Dow, mm. down, pretty, pretty ugly, right? Uh, mm. I mean... Uh, it's holding above trend, but down last night, yeah? Yeah. And you can see, obviously, the NASDAQ down. So there looks like this balance of power. It looks like the Republicans have... Um, and I think the Democrats did actually very well when with such a disastrous economy. I think they've done... What, I, I mean, I'm, an, I'm just looking at this from a very amateur point of view, Wolf, but they seem to me that they've done very well, where... You, you would have thought with, in fact miraculously well <laughs> yeah well you, you would have thought so but um but you you look for this balance of power which the markets yeah. have got mm. but the, so why the sell-off is is is, this, is it because it's still a little bit of confusion over the midterms no i think i think if you look at that i'm just looking at fairly simple stuff right the chart we had a very good last four weeks right mm. burst up really strongly it just needed a bit of a breather Plus, we've got core inflation coming up tonight. You know, we had pretty good two or three well, last three days. I, well, I, I think we had a profit taking before the well, big news tonight. I think that's what it was all about. And that's what we talked about. The CPI numbers coming out tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing, of, and I suppose the chances are that <coughs> everything's still booming. Yeah, I, I, look, I, I think that's... The, what we've seen previously, the value stuff is still, I think, the number one key thing. You, you know, keep sticking to that value. There will probably be value emerging in some of these tech stocks. And of course, we have been nibbing on a few, but I think that nothing's changed for me, right? The midterms, I think, just put in the fact that the market's not going to collapse. I think it's going to be probably status quo until we see another um, another catalyst somewhere along the line, uh, whatever that might be, right? And it could have come out of like Ukraine, could come up, come up anything out of China, whatever, right? We know. China's fairly weak still uh, economically, so we can't get any positive news out of there for the moment. And of course, we can't get any positive news out of Europe either. So, uh, you know, we had a bit of a rally. I think we've been in a bit of a pause and we'll see what happens next. And this, I think inflation numbers might give us a bit of a direction where we might be going. Because if, if the inflation numbers are pretty bad, again, then the market are going, oh my Lord, you know, another 0.75 or more uh, of um, interest rate rises, which is not great. But you know what? The market's been resilient so far. It has. It has. So you've got to give them that maybe the market's just getting used to this. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, yeah. let's talk about, talk to, uh, really, the announcement of the day was Origin. Mm -hmm. uh, private equity um, coming in, uh, Brookfield yeah. Asset Management, um, mm -hmm. with a $9, and it's, Let's just say this uh, is not a. This is a non-binding proposal, mm -hmm. so it might not happen. Mm -hmm. But you can see uh, it's up uh, very strongly. I tell you what, I have to give. I have to give credit to the management. They kept it pretty quiet because they were in discussions for some time, Dave. 
the, the, the share price performance isn't indicated that there were, were there discussions of a big takeover offer? So I think the first one was about six something, right? Um, then they increased it, the private equity increased it to about seven, uh, sorry, seven or seven. Then we just did about eight something. And then the last offer, they said nine. They're still in discussions with that, but origin management said, if they get a binding um, offer for nine bucks, we are going to accept it from the management. Well, I, it's, it's a pretty good offer, isn't it? Ooh. When you're trading it where they are, but um, and then this private consortium will separate the the retail and. Well, uh, this is just my speculation. I mean, they, you know, they want to extract value out of any assets that private equity buys or any company buys. They only obviously extract value. Whether the company overall is undervalued, you, you know, you probably can suggest yes. But can they, you know, if they separate the assets from the retail electricity versus, you know, the upstream and downstream type activities they've got as well, that also is probably something on the radar of the private equity. Equity. So, you know, I think they can see obviously value in there. They've done the numbers. Um, whether nine dollars is going to be the end end game, we we're about to find out over the next few weeks. Well, for the sort of money though that private equity have today. Basically, it? it is. This is very different to maybe 2007, 2008, where, okay, we had private equity with, with money, but nowadays it's a lot. There seems yeah, to be it's a, like a I got 40 billion there, 30 billion there. Right. You know, it's like, where are they getting this money from? Yeah, <laughs> it's all cash. I know. Well, money's still, I suppose you could argue, it's still inexpensive compared oh, to. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, now, mm -hmm. SWM, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just. Just very tiring the price action. Look, it just can't get over trend. Mm -hmm. That announcement just can't do it. And yep. if I look at NEC, whew, very, very similar charts. You know, both of them, they're trying to get some sentiment back in the story, but both are failing wolf. So technically we're just not interested. I know you've talked about SWM of taking that long-term view. Mm -hmm. And long term, you're right, Wolf, because it ain't doing anything. <laughs> Dave, I tell you what, the 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 market's got you know basically deaf, tone deaf at the moment. Doesn't matter what the management's saying from NEC or SWM, the market sees it as this: um, we're coming into a, you know rising interest rates, slowdown in the economy, which means probably less advertising going around because you know you're going to pull pull your head in uh, if you're a company, save some costs uh, with inflation. That's what the market's focused on. So they probably they think themselves, well, they're going to be they're going to they're going to suffer, and we're probably going to hear about it in the next six months. While they're not saying this at the moment, uh, SWNEC, that's what the market's betting on. That's why they're not interested for the moment. They're happy to just sit it, sit it out uh, and see how they go over the next twelve months. Which is, you know, for my for my point of fair enough, fair enough. Um, so that's why it's a long term investment. <laughs> All right, now let's talk mm -hmm. about it. Um, charts don't lie, do they? CPU. We had a buy signal, so put it on Einstein's yep. bang. bank. And we do have a 2950 target price on this story, yep. uh, which is would be a nice 15% return if we hit it, Wolf. Uh, we did put that on a while back, but you know what? We get 15% in six months, we're happy. Um, looking very, very good, isn't it? That breakout, no reason why it can't go on. Yeah, an upgrade today. That was an update. That's why it's broken out. So obviously, the market knew something last week. Um, that's why they gave you that nice, beautiful signal. And, you know, upgrade on the back of uh, interest margins going up, which is the, you know, what's working right now for them. You know what? The interest uh, the interest rises are going to keep going. So this could be the 29, could be could be the not too, not too far from here. Right. Thank you. And possibly not too late to get in for, for make a 5% 5 5 trade on it, Wolf. Mm-hmm. Well, for another nice chart, which is PSI, yep. um, it's flat on the announcement, but you you like the announcement, correct? Oh, it's it's you know, reiterating the idea. So that's a that's a that's a positive for me in this market. Uh, so you know, in a right space, in a way, um, insurance. So for me, PSI, AUB in this space are decent companies, both looking quite good. Prefer AUB story, but you know, both okay. And of course, Sun that had announcement out today, and again that chart's looking good, mm. uh, having a nice little breakout. So good, solid announcement for, from one of our dividend companies. So yeah. nice, so hey, nicely, go. yeah, nicely a dividend company, you know, just performing as well, giving a little bit of growth at the moment. I know, I know, and you know what, you know, it's an insurance, pure insurance company now after that, um, you know, announcement of 
getting rid of his banking division. And it's nice because they can focus on the one thing, pretty nice update all around. And I, you know what? This is a, probably one of the now top three dividend stories around. Excellent. Excellent. Can you just have a look? Tell us what it gives um, Sun at the moment. Or yep. if someone who is looking for a dividend, it has had a little bit of a run. So maybe not quite as good as what it was. Yeah, well, it's in our, it's in our dividend portfolio um, on the website. Um, about 5%. So it's still a, a good dividend for a quality business. Yeah, not bad. I mean, you know, obviously it's going to run. And you want to, you know, you want to pick these things up not now for a dividend, you want to pick them up on his bottom range. You want to pick them up probably for a quick trade here, right? At these, these prices. So I'll just be patient, but it's going quite well. Oof. Mm -hmm. XRO. Mm -hmm. Possibly, uh, you know, with maybe with uh, Squared on our market, one of the best uh, tech plays we've got, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The price action is terrible. Unbelievably awful, down 10%. Mm -hmm. The market uh, are not liking this at all today. Yeah, you're scratching your head and thinking, the, the, "There's actually nothing different to this one they've been doing for years." Um, I thought it's just it's just a question of the new world that we're living in, where the, the new world just wants to see some profits. They want to see company being profitable. They don't want the the last thing they do is want the company going back and raising more money on the market. Um, I you know, are, is the market saying you've got the you've got XRO you've got your balance wrong here? Yeah, we get that you're growing as fast as you can, but you need to slow down. We want to see profits because we don't want to see you raising money. Look, there's probably two, maybe three things in here, right? In this announcement, because there's actually a number of announcements today for for XRO. First of all, let's not forget there's a new CEO, right, coming in, yeah. and I'm just reading through her, and that you know that could be part of this um, force today. Uh, and she she is ex Silicon Valley, 20, exp 20 years experience with that. I think Google was part of her resume. Um, so at the end of the day, they've got someone new in charge. Um, so that could be part of the weakness. The other things, like you said, I mean, the market is looking. Can you balance your books, right? For, between growth and having a positive bottom line. It blew out a little bit. So the net loss widen to 16.1 from 5.9 maybe that's what the market's also going well you know we want to see companies that are profitable really that's what we're going to reward maybe a little bit of what's next as well out there right um and maybe a little bit of expectations in there as well so i think it's a mixture but overall dave i mean if you look at a company growing at almost 30 percent right at the top line if you just get rid of all the small noise at the moment, remember they're going through growth phase, right? That which, would, which will probably impact some numbers here and there from quarter to quarter, right? But if you look at the long-term way it's going, how well um, XRO's, uh, I suppose, software is in the, in the taxation world, right? It is very well regarded. So for me, it's going to produce a pretty good opportunity to get into a really great story. And we don't have many on ASX, I have to say, in that in the tech space. And I'm actually excited about this. Please sell off, skip selling it. And I'm probably start looking at about $60 is my probably first little nibble that I probably make on XRO. We don't have any in the portfolio at the moment, but it would be probably 60 bucks because I, you know, I still like the long term. There is some still, you know, probably a little bit of questions you've got to ask yourself like how is this new ceo going to go what direction is going to take with it um so there's a little bit of risk in there that's why i would not be backing up the truck yet but at least i might have a first nibble around 60 bucks which is not that far away anyway and if you look at you know how do you value this company dave because of course you know because it's unprofitable there's no pe um even though it's cash flow positive and they're putting pretty much all the cash back into the business to grow their business which is like i said for, for me from a long-term point of view is fine because they want to how much cash do they have in, at the moment um it's a very good question i have to have a look at that uh and i don't have that information in front of me right now but I'll, i will check it um but you know that's obviously a danger you know are they going to raise mm, if they're going to maybe make an acquisition yes but because they're cash flow positive i don't think they need to go to the market you know as often as someone that's Cash flow negative, which they actually probably have to go quite often. Um, so that's a small risk, but you know, there's always a risk 
them going there. The thing for me is looking, okay, if I can't value it on, say, PEs, what can I value it at? And I'm looking at the revenue side of things. And they gave, what, $650 million New Zealand dollars. So let me just put that into my little calculator. And I'm going to have a look at the NZD uh, to see what actually converts to Aussie dollars. So give me a sec. And let's put it in there. So, and I want to see, so I think it's, let's, let's call it around about 12, 1.2 billion, right? Uh, on Aussie terms. So market cap's about 10 billion right now or 10 and a half. So let's calculate it. 10.5 divided by 1.2. Yeah, 8.75, right? It hasn't traded on 8.75 ever. Ever, so it's getting cheap on those metrics. Um, it's always okay. 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 Can I play devil's advocate? Yeah, with go you? on. Mm -hmm. so if the market is re-rating how it values mm -hmm. stories, and it goes back to how it was valuing these sort of stories before the big tech boom, right? Mm -hmm. This this could be trading four times. Not on the growth rates, I don't think. If this was growing maybe ten percent, yes, I could argue that, Dave, but. If it's if it's growing at thirty percent, I can't see it happening. To but, be honest. But okay, but say for example, we're, we're getting a world recession. Mm -hmm. um, they start losing customers. Customers start going broke. Um, I'm just. They still, I've have, just they still have to put in the tax tax report in. Well, not if they're not if they're closed down. They don't. True. Right. True. Okay. So. True. So potentially, if there is a world recession, you could yeah. see that you could see them having to fight pretty hard to keep hold of members, right? Yeah, look, uh, there is, I, I, I just, I, I, yeah, there is that maybe slowdown in growth on that, on the premise of that, you know, let's say, okay, that does slow down. So it goes to 10% growth, right? Mm. Um, then are they, are they worth four times earnings? Look, anything's possible. Like I said, you know, I could never discount anything, but highly, highly unlikely because when, because this will be say it will be, they say there will be temporary thing, right? So because it's a market darling, it's highly unlikely we'll go down to those levels. Yeah, and but, uh, yeah. okay, but I'd argue I'm just argue I'm not being argumentative to that. Well, I'm being argumentative, but so <laughs> I'm just saying market darlings very do change. I mean, uh, you know, A2 Milk was a market darling, wasn't it? At one stage, what how could A2 Milk ever go wrong? And, bang down it goes right yeah but the, but, but the fundamentals would have to change completely right so if you look at rea i mean that's a, probably a better for me okay REA, value, that's, right yeah uh, REA, REA. well it's always been expensive ups look and at, downs doesn't matter it's been always expensive look at rea goes up to trends on the way back down again this looks like it's going lower yeah yeah so look you know, i'm thinking more on rea type stuff where the business still grew somewhat you know in a, even a bad worst times so let's say they were flat they were still expensive even flat times <laughs> this is the this is what i'm saying i you know when you get a company that's really loved by the market that can deliver over a long, long period of time the chances are of it really becoming a put in a sin bin are very low uh but like i said i've never done this kind of anything so um, your scenario for me is very low right what's going to happen so for me if i look at xro's chart i think the worst case scenario for me, if I look at it, probably be about. So if I'm looking, you say, okay, my worst would be coming back to about five, six times, right? So another maybe thirty percent from here. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, that, it's now down thirteen percent, Wolf. Mm -hmm. Yep. So maybe forty-five bucks somewhere there. All right. Yep. That's what I'd be probably my low, low, low. So, low. Mm -hmm. the, so your sell Natalie would be forty-five bucks um yeah somewhere there yep okay so, bucks. okay so what mm -hmm. your argument is is that if it hits 60 which could be in about five minutes where it's falling right <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, uh, this, yeah. this could be a quick uh quick little nibble <laughs> yeah right quick little nibble but yeah. you you wouldn't be buying it all there you'd be looking to no them. just a quick nibble absolutely you'd, you'd so be, be looking to buy on be, in this area for the long term between 60 and 45 right yeah yeah, and, let's go at 40 and 60. I mean, for ease of purposes of nice numbers, right? Between 40 yeah. and 60. Mm -hmm. So, and hopefully... Average 50, around 50. Take, an right? average around 50, which would be an idea. And ah, if, I'll, be, I'll be bloody... For the long-termers out there, I think that would be pretty attractive. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, Wolf, we don't doubt you. I mean, 
your record on picking stories has been unbelievable equity story so um all right good as good long start. as the new CEO doesn't stuff up the company of course <laughs> that's uh, the caveat right yeah i suppose so um which you never know i suppose there's that bit exactly. of doubt isn't it exactly um now drone shield mm -hmm. uh, actually looking quite nice maybe it looks like it had a million dollar order mm -hmm. it's it's the in thing at the moment drones aren't they um yeah yeah maybe there's a trade in this could go back up and retest that uh 25 uh cents wolf mm -hmm. easily right so quite like it now ansel's um i think poor price action really it had that run up couldn't get through i said this on ask the analyst couldn't get through that level um Bit of a warning there from the company day to day, so I, that's yeah. why I'm negative. I wouldn't be get, wouldn't be touching this at the moment. This can't go on with it, can it? I think yeah. uh, if you're trending, I'd get out of it. I think yeah. there's better stuff to look at. Right. Um, and fundamentally, just a little bit of a little bit of an issue there. Mm -hmm. uh, CSR, um, again, poor action. Sell signal, Wolfie, which I don't like. Looks like it's going back down to four Dave, bucks. Dave, another one of those cases that. The market does not believe what the, the company is saying at this stage, right? And they're going recession, building materials companies are going to collapse. Goodbye. Yeah, doesn't look good, does it? No. Um, gin. Again, it just can't get back through trend. Look, couldn't do it there, can't do it there. Technically, it doesn't look good. The, the update today was pretty average, I have to say. Uh, you know, there's a couple of negative things in there with uh, increase in costs on the back of an increase uh, on the clip of every ticket they sell from the lotteries. Um, you know, they had that big 120 million Powerball jackpot, which is positive, but, you know, they don't happen very often. So <clears throat> for me, it's it's just, it's been disappointing, I have to say. Uh, yeah, not not for me. Uh, Wolf Deg, uh, we hit our target price. So hopefully uh, everyone made profits on that. Mm -hmm. um you know what if you wanted to you know that was our target take a profit um you know if you're going to be in this still you're going to have a tight stop on and you're not going to lose your profit so maybe just put a tight stop under that 120 say 119 and a half wolf yeah um, enough just on gold let me just quickly i'm just reading, reading some stuff on gold on stockhead right mm -hmm. uh and some interesting numbers on there saying that this year the central banks bought more gold since 1967. <laughs> what does it tell you there? Yeah. <laughs> There's something about gold that maybe to 2023, that's why probably that's my pick for the 2023 as a commodity. Um, we could be onto something here with gold. So I think the, the, the general, general feeling is that the central banks are worried. So on Tuesday, I, did, I, I said to you, if you're going to have your, put your fundamental hat on, your... Mm -hmm analyst hat what would be the commodity for next year and gold gold was your your pick wolf yeah and um and you could well be right with the way the world is at the moment with mm -hmm. you know ukraine still looking uh inflation ukraine inflation. Could be, you know if you've got the the us dollar reversing that's a big bull bullish sign for gold so you know that's, the things are there the ingredients are there can they get mixed together and create a great environment for gold um ctm Mm -hmm. um centaurus uh, mm -hmm. it's not trending very well but you want i just to want to mention this one because they've just come up with the uh update on the resource and it's a big one dave it's a massive you know almost one million tons of nickel i tell you what i'll just give you a perspective on it normally you get the little miners here in australia and they're happy with like 10 000, 15 000 of total nickel content and they, they, these guys have got a million Right. Okay. So this is huge. This is huge. So the, the market cap then, mm -hmm. I'm just having a look at market cap, but mm -hmm. like 450 million for such a big resource. Mm -hmm. um, would this be something BHP or Rio would look at? Possibly. Possibly if they're happy with nickel and they're happy with, um, you know, the, the view that uh, this is a good place to go and mine this. Yeah. Why not? Right. So technically, I don't like it, but fundamentally, yeah, there's definitely, there's going to definitely be some interest from someone out there, I'd say. All right. Um, and GDA, well, if you want to talk about a little uh, GDA, again, in a downturn, it's not looking it's very, very good. Mm -hmm. But uh, tell us why you wanted to chat about this one. Oh, I just wanted to go have a quick look to see where it's looking at on the charts. But 
it's not looking great. So we're not going to talk about it. I know there was a, not a bad little update, but you know, it's just not trending. So pass for me. Okay, little uh, drinks business, isn't it? Yep. Um, Australian yep. beer market. I mean, craft um, beers and yeah. Okay, so we're Good gonna pass. we're gonna we're gonna avoid that one, yep. but uh, maybe on the radar if it starts trending one day. Maybe. Um, well, so Wolf, I just want to recap. Um, yep. There's some interesting stuff there. This XRO, I'm seeing it a little bit eleven, maybe bouncing off that thirteen a little bit better. Mm. Um, so I think that idea is is interesting of yours. Again, it's not technical, but this idea of trying to pick up this quality business at the right price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Suncorp, excellent dividend play, doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. Ansel's sort of get out of it. Origin, don't buy that because it's it's only uh you you there's still another of steps to take you know, yeah, to get it could, it. yeah, it could be a dollar, but a little bit risky. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, very happy with the equity story trades deg made money for us and uh cpu is on the way so very very happy wolf in a difficult market that the sort of trades that we've generally been putting on yep. are doing very very well and you know newcrest as well um you know coming back i think we've got that 21 it's coming back and starting to make money so some very good little ideas that we've been putting out of late and yep. hopefully everyone's making some money on them and uh, again uh, obviously einstein's just picking CPU beautifully, that buy signal, um, bang, up, through it goes. Absolutely okay. superb. Mm -hmm. um, on that note, Wolfie, thank you very, very much. And tomorrow okay. we've got live at, um, uh, I don't know, it's uh, 12 o'clock. Yes. Um, please, if you part of Equity Story and you love what we do, please come and join us for live. Because I think it's the most that exciting. That idea to get, Dave. I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing. I, so yeah, many but, ideas. But why wouldn't you? If you're a member of Equity Story and you're sitting mm -hmm. there and you're, mm -hmm. you're not too sure if I'm in the right story or in the wrong story, come and join us. Yeah, but um, the, the number of winners we get out of this, this session every single Friday, because, you know, we look at the weeklies and the weekly ends on a Friday. So we look at, you know, what might happen next week. So the ideas that the members put up, there was stuff we put up and we talk about the great stories and so on. My goodness me, you probably don't have to do much. Just listen to the Friday stuff and you're going to get enough stuff to trade with for next week. And uh, not forgetting, we are working this uh, Saturday. We've got CTM or Saturday, Wolfie. Um, please, if you haven't done the Cincinnati course, do it. And you know what? There it was again. You know, there's your buy signal. Bang, up it goes. And you know what? It's money for nothing. You need to know how to, what buy signals are all about. You need to know how to trade. You need to know how far, how to do your stop losses. You need to do a CTM. Yep. I, I think if you don't do CTM, um, it's it, you, you're, you're just putting yourself at such a disadvantage. It's ridiculous. Um, on that note, Wolfie, have a good day, mate. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Uh -huh.